Tiny Tom's going to minister to us tonight. And uh, it's, it's, don't be nervous. Trust me, there's nothing to be nervous up here about. And uh, Thomas said, Pastor, could I play my ukulele? I wanted to say, I don't know, can you? <laughs> but uh, I called it his midget guitar since I'm a guitar player. And, uh, Ow. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm nervous, Don't but we love you. here we go. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. This thing's slippery, I'm sorry. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me still today. Walking with me on my way. Wanting as a friend to give life and love to all who live. Yes, Jesus loves me. Thank you, Jesus. Good job. All right. Amen. Amen. You do the hula. You do that. That's so. <laughs> he just couldn't leave it alone. Brother Randy, come on up here and get us out of this. <laughs> This flock is a full-time job overseeing and watching and hurting and... <laughs> That's why we can't use three minutes soon. <laughs> I can't believe you all came back. <laughs> hey, I want everybody on my right to look at everybody on my left. Now repeat after me. I am so glad that I don't look like you. <laughs> now I want everybody on my left. Well listen. Everybody on my left. Look at everybody on my right. Repeat after me. I'm so glad. That you don't look like me either. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> It's been great to be here. It really has. And thank you so much, Pastor, for having me. And your really nice uh, prophet chamber where I could dress and study. And I really appreciate that so much. Uh, those who have your Bibles tonight, if you'll uh, turn with me to 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, it's been, of course, known many times as a love chapter. Uh, and I want us to... Uh, if you don't mind, just stand one more time as we honor God by the reading of His precious Holy Word, inspired by the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. Verse 13, the Bible uh, says, And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we do love you, and we're so thankful for those testimony uh, as proof, Lord, uh, working in people's lives and, and the blessings that you bestow upon your people. And Lord, we're so grateful for uh, ministering to your people as only you can. And we ask the Holy Spirit of God to work in hearts tonight, Lord. It was great this morning, but this is a different, uh, this is a different service, Lord. And Lord, uh, we, we can't look toward past blessings. We want fresh blessings every day that you promise. And Lord, we just ask that you bless this church, bless this dear man of God and his wife. Thank you, Lord, for these people. In Jesus' we precious name we do pray. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you. You may be seated. You know, it's a privilege and an honor to grow up in a Christian home. You know, my granddaddy, Davis, was a, uh, a Baptist deacon. My daddy was a Baptist pastor. And uh, I had the privilege and honor growing up in a Christian home. But you know, it breaks my heart to see all the broken homes and families today. I do wish that God would get a hold of your heart and just do something that only he can do. I want you to think on the thought tonight, what love will cause. What love will cause. Now abideth. Now abideth. You know, like we say down in Georgia, hang in there like a hair in a biscuit. You can make it. You can make it. Do right till the stars fall from heaven. You can do it. The greatest of these is charity. If you're going to make it to heaven, first of all, you've got to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's not what you do for Jesus. It's what Jesus did for you. Amen. It's not how good you are. It's how good he is. The greatest of these is charity. You know, you have to have Jesus Christ in your heart. A lot of, of things that church folks do only outward show. You've got to have what we call the inner three, faith, hope, and charity. First of all, number one, uh, the scripture tells us abideth faith. Without faith, it is what? Impossible. Impossible to please God. For all that come to him must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The just shall live how? By faith. By faith. You're pretty smart. <laughs> Four times in the word of God, God reaffirms this truth in the book of Habakkuk, in the book of Romans, in the book of Galatians, and in the book of Hebrews. And Jesus rebuked his disciples, not because they didn't dress right, but because of little faith. All ye of little faith, how long shall I tarry with you? One of the greatest adventures of the Christian life is living by faith. You know, to watch God move heaven and earth. When somebody gets on their knees and wrestles with God and say, I'm here to hold on to you until you bless me. That'll light anybody's fire, amen? amen. Thank God for faith tonight. Why aren't mountains being moved today? Because we have no faith today. Jesus Christ said, whatsoever you ask in faith, believing, it shall be given unto you. Amen. So many folks don't have faith today. They, they knock themselves out and wear themselves out instead of trusting God and letting God prove himself. Yeah. Now, I'm not preaching tonight to a bunch of babies. I'm preaching to folks who exercise faith in God. Have faith in God. Folks ask me all the time to, to pray for their lost loved ones, and I'm so honored to. But folks, have faith in God. Second of all, the scripture says, abideth hope. Now, you know, uh, if you're here tonight and you say, I hope I'm saved, I'm here to tell you you're not saved. Amen. Because, you see, that's not what the Bible gives. That's not what the Bible's talking about. When the Bible talks about hope, it is confidence that we have. It is biblical Christianity in motion. Now abideth faith, hope. James, by the way, is the author of practical Christianity. Show me your faith by your works. We're supposed to have confidence in God. The Bible says, I know who I am believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. By the way, that's called hope. The second coming of Jesus Christ is called the blessed hope. Now, if you're running around here saying, I hope he's coming back and you're a little worried about right now, you don't have Bible hope. The second coming here is the blessed hope. And I know he's coming back. Because he said in Romans 10, 13, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And since I've been saved, every time I treasure one of God's promises, he brought it to pass. And one day, the Bible says, in John chapter 14, verse 
uh, 1 through 3, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are how many mansions? Hey. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. I won't bore you with my singing. <laughs> Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house of many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go away to prepare a place for you. And if I go away to prepare a place for you, say it. I will come again. Folks, he's coming again. Amen. The dear Lord, you know, I hope he comes tonight. That would be a great thing. But I hope I get done preaching, you know, because uh, there won't be no need for preaching. You know, I think I'd, I'd love to tell the angels a little bit about what salvation is like. They don't know that. You know, and, and, and Jesus had a special place in his heart for fishermen. I think uh, I'd like to kind of sit down by the river of life and take my shoes off and kind of, and I tell you, I'll catch such a big fish, I won't need to lie. <laughs> But the truth is, folks, listen, Second, a third of all, you know, now by the faith, hope, and number three, charity. Abideth charity. Now, what good is it with all that faith, all of that hope, and no love, no charity? The Bible says the greatest of these is charity. Do you know why I know I'm saved? Because I love you. We know that we pass from death into life because we love. Now what about you? If you're gossiping or backbiting or slandering around, you've got envy and bitterness and hatred in your heart here tonight towards somebody in one of these pews or back in the house where you live. I'm here to tell you, you'd better take serious inventory. Find out if you're in the faith or not. I know that I'm safe. You can't be right with God if you don't love me. Isn't that neat? You got to love me. Na, 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 na. Guess what? I got to love you too. And that's hard. <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> now about his faith, hope, charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. Why is it the greatest? Because it is a verb, because it shows action. Love is not some little fuzzy emotional feeling. Now, I'm not saying I don't have feelings for my wife. I thank God for those feelings, but love is a decision. Don't tell me that you love me. Show me that you love me. Don't sing, oh, how I love Jesus. Show him how much you love him. Amen. Now, about his faith, hope. Charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Show somebody that you love them. Show it. Show it. Don't sing, oh, how I love Jesus. Get out there and do something for God. Yep. You can turn your hearing aids off tonight. Christ says it is the greatest because it is love in action. By this means shall all men know that you're my disciples, is that you love one another. Some have left and gone to other churches because of lack of love. But I want to be known as a Christian full of love. I want to be known as somebody who, who loves and has compassion and a broken heart. I want to be able to weep when you weep. I want to be able to mourn when you mourn. I want to be moved when you're moved. So many folks we've turned our backs on instead of loving them back to Jesus Christ. A lot of folks out there that have fallen, they're alive by the grace of God. We need to have love and humility for the fallen. The Bible says, let him that think if he stands, take heed lest he fall. Galatians chapter 6 verse 1. And when there's sin, there ought to be guilt and there ought to be shame and there ought to be embarrassment, but there ought to be a truckload of love. Say amen. amen. But let's not throw the, the pot away. Let's not uh, throw the clay away. I'm so glad that when Christ threw the pot away, I'm so glad that when we stumble and we fall, that Christ doesn't throw the clay away. 
In loving kindness, Jesus came. With loving hands, he lifted me. With loving arms, he lifted me. Oh, praise his name, he lifted me. Somebody, someday you're going to need to be lifted up. And ye who are spiritual, restore such a one. What is spirituality? It is love. It's not wearing your dress too short or men not cutting your hair uh, short, although you ought to do that. But give me some folks who don't know what love is and been smacked around all of their life and all you got to do is just love them a little bit. Just a little bit. We sit here tonight saved and on our way to heaven and we don't have the foggiest idea of what love is. Love will cause you to Jesus Christ. I'm not here to tell you what the rules are. In fact, uh, I, I'm not even here to enforce the rules. Jesus Christ in his word says the greatest of the three is charity. You ought to love today. Because see, Jesus Christ said that love will cause, will cause something to happen to you. Number one in John chapter 13. What does it take to walk on water? Peter walked on water. What did it take? Faith. So Peter is the apostle of faith. Who's the apostle of hope? James, practical Christianity. Who's the apostle of love? John, the beloved John. Now abideth Peter, James, and John. But the greatest of these is John. Did you know that you won't find the phrases Peter, James, and John in the book of John? But you will find them in the books of Matthew, Mark and Luke. By the way, Matthew is a picture of the king. Mark is a picture of a servant. Luke is a picture of the son of man. And John is a picture of God. Everywhere Jesus went, he took the inner three, Peter, James, and John. Aren't we supposed to have the inner three wherever we go? Faith, hope, and charity. He took Peter, James, and John when he went uh, to the house of Jairus. He took Peter, James, and John when he went to the Mount of Transfiguration. He took Peter, James, and John when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. What are you trying to say, Brother Randy? Every king needs faith, hope, and charity. Every servant needs faith, hope, and charity. Every man needs faith, hope, and charity. Why don't you find the names of James and John and Peter written in the books of John? Because you see, God doesn't need faith, hope, and charity. God is faith, hope, and charity. Galatians chapter twenty, uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 20, if you'll turn there with me. Over to the book of Galatians, if you will. Uh, chapter 2 and verse 20. Notice what the Bible says in verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live by the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, my dear friends, do you want to be something for Jesus Christ? You need to take faith, hope, and charity everywhere you go. Yep. Now about if Peter, James, and John, of these three, the greatest of these is John. Why is love the greatest? Because love will cause you. Listen, folks, it's easy to live by a set of rules. But it's a horse of a different color to live by love. You want somebody to tell you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. What you need to do is get along with God and say, God, increase my love. You need to grow up a little bit. And get along with Jesus Christ and say, God, I love you, but help me with my lack of love. Because love will cause something to happen to you. The greatest thing that will ever happen to you is when you fall in love with Jesus Christ. I promise you, you'll have a happy home. I promise you, you'll have a happy marriage. I promise you, you'll have a good life. If you fall in love with Jesus Christ and make him first. 
He's a jealous God. He will have no other gods before him. It's important that every one of us from the pulpit to the pew fall in love with Jesus Christ today. That's why Jesus said that the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is charity. What will love cause? Look in uh, the Gospel of John chapter 13. Let's go back to our text. And I want you to see with me verse uh, 21 through verse 23. And notice in verse 21, the Bible says, The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethesda of Galilee, and desired him, saying, We would see Jesus. Uh, I'm, I'm in uh, ch chapter 12. I'm sorry about that. Okay, in, in 13, verse 21. Uh, over in 21, when Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray, betray me. And then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now, when there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Who was that? John. There was the beloved John. I want to know where faith and hope were sitting. Uh, would somebody tell me where the other disciples were sitting? I don't know and you don't know. But glory to God, I know where John was sitting. For he was leaning on Jesus' bosom. You see, dear friends, when John the beloved walked up in that upper room. And he said to the other disciples, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm sitting there. Now, he didn't ask where he was going to sit. He chose to sit next to Jesus. And you see, my dear friends, John's soul is thirsting for God. Love will cause you to draw close to Jesus Christ. I'm not saying the other disciples didn't love Jesus, but they didn't love him enough to push everybody else aside. I know somebody who said, I want to sit next to him. And Jesus is the kind of Savior who would say, I want that kind of attention. Will somebody, will somebody, will somebody draw close to me? You know, dear friends, the problem with some folks isn't that they don't dress right. They don't love Jesus enough. And you say, how do you know? Because they could care less whether or not they fellowship with God today. You know, I call my wife Scooter every day, several times a day. And when I'm on the road, uh, the longer I'm away, the more I call her. You know, John got to hear what no human ear got to hear. ba boom ba boom ba boom He got to hear the very heartbeat of God. And then as Jesus exhaled and inhaled, he felt the very breath of God upon his brow. You see, my dear friends, the same breath that formed the first man out of the earth. Glory to God, I'm about to have a fit. But that was the same breath that God breathed into Adam. The same breath that he breathed into your King James Bible on your lap tonight. Say amen. By the inspiration of God. When you fall in love with Jesus Christ, you say, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there. And you see, my friends, when you hear the very heartbeat of God and feel his breath upon your brow, you know, you may look right and dress right, but when you left your room this morning, did you think to pray? Did you think to lean your head on Jesus' bosom? When you left your room this morning, did you think to pray? Jesus' bosom, his heartbeat, you feel his breath upon on your brow. When you fall in love with God, you say, I've got to have his uh, word uh, to esteem me more than my necessary food. Somebody, somebody, somebody let me through. I've got to get to the feet of the master. Love will cause you to do that. You say, I don't like being first. Honey, you don't worry. You know, um, you know God's big enough for everybody to be first. Amen. Amen. Uh, you just push everybody out of the way because there are a lot of spectators standing around who really don't care to draw close to Jesus Christ. 
But I'm here to tell you tonight, there are a few, glory to God, there's a few who say, let me through uh, to the throne of mercy. Let me at my Savior's feet. Let him hear me tell him that I love him. Number two, John chapter 18. Let's look at verse 15 and 16. The gospel of John chapter 18. Let's look at verse 15 and 16 together. Verse 15, the Bible says, And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Who was that? That was John. Second of all, love will cause you to go through your hard times. Love will cause you to go through your hard times. Who was that disciple again? John. John went in. Peter stayed at the door. Faith stood outside the door where they were trying Jesus, but love went in. And love, don't miss this, love, not your faith. Love will cause you to go through your hard times. You know, after walking with the Lord for 59 years, there's been times that I doubted he existed. There have been times I'd wake up and wonder if he was real. But in those dark hours when my faith did not seem to exist, I prayed you may not be real, but I can't imagine living without you. When you're sick and he seems like he's a million miles away. Only thing that's going to make you get up and shake yourself off is your love and your heart for Almighty God. Because there will come a time when you'll wonder if He's real or not and your faith will seem that it doesn't exist. When you wake up some morning and somebody that you loved and poured yourself into has run away from home and you wonder where you went wrong. And you'll hear Satan standing back there laughing at you. <laughs> I've got one now. By the time I get done with him, you won't even know he was raised in a preacher's home. <laughs> time I get done with her, you won't even know she was raised in a Christian home. You know what you'll do? You'll say, oh God, I feel so dead. Oh God, I feel so empty. Oh God, I feel so faithless. I want you to know something, Jesus. I can't imagine another day without you. And though sometimes it feels like he's forsaken you and drawn back from you and doesn't exist, it's all been a lie. But there'll be something inside of you when you've heard the heartbeat of God and felt his breath upon your brow. Say, I just think I'll get up and go on another day. And maybe i run into him just one more time. I'm here to tell you, you know, after love got in there and found out that it wasn't so bad, he went out there and brought faith in and they both grew in the Lord. Love will cause you to go through your tribulations. Your tribulations may seem small to others, but life-threatening to you. When folks avoid you and ignore you because of your love for Christ. You might think it's the end, but fall in love with Jesus Christ. If you love him, you won't quit on him. Because love would take you through your trials. Not faith, but love. Because love would cause you to do what's right. Not the Ten Commandments, not breaking some rules and regulations, but love. Number three, let's look at the Gospel of John chapter 19, verse 20 together. Verse 20. Verse 20, the Bible says, This title then read many of the Jews for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Uh, I meant to go to uh, verse 90, uh, 25, I'm sorry. Verse 25, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. 
The third thing that love will cause you to do, it'll cause you to be where you ought to be. Where are the men? A bunch of women at the foot of the cross. Now, I'd rather die and go to hell than to know my wife is more spiritual than me. Don't get mad at me, ladies. The boogie man will get you. <laughs> I'm only kidding. But, you know, I'm the spiritual leader of my home. And I would quench at the thought to think that my wife pray or read her Bible more than me. This is not a contest. Say amen. Not a contest. Ladies, I'm here to tell you, you'd rather die and go to hell to have a man like that. Say amen, ladies. Get me out of this. <laughs> but a man is to take his position in the home like he's supposed to do. And when Jesus saw his mother and other ladies along with his disciples whom he loved, what was that? Who was that? John. You know, folks, you cannot find one place in the Gospels where John was anywhere but except where he was supposed to be. You know, when all of the other disciples fled except a handful, there stood John. You know, because love would cause you to be where you ought to be. Where should you be when the church doors open? Church. Church. Where should you be at church activities? If you love Jesus, you'll be where you ought to be. Now, I'm teaching you something tonight that will change your life. Let's talk about Jesus tonight. John chapter 19, let's look at verse 30. In verse 30, uh, the Bible said, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Would Matthew, Mark, and Luke please come up to the platform? Now, Matthew, would you tell us what you heard when they crucified Jesus? Well, uh, they said that uh, we heard him cry out in a loud voice, and then he gave up the ghost. I see. Mark, how about you? What did you hear that day when Jesus was crucified? Well, all I know is that I heard him cry out in a loud voice, and he gave up the ghost. Now, Luke, you're a physician. You look at detail. What did you notice that day when Jesus was crucified? And he said, all I know is I heard him cry out with a loud voice, and then he gave up the ghost. And then John, the beloved John. John, what did you hear? Well, he cried out with a loud voice, and then he said, it is finished. It is finished. See, my friends, number four, love will cause you to listen to other people. Love will cause you to listen to other people. You know, uh, it'll cause you to listen when others don't. You want to know why 90 to 95% of folks go to church and don't hear what the preacher says? There isn't any love. How many times pastors have someone come up to them at the end of the service tell them, uh, this is our last Sunday. And the pastor asks why, and I'm just, I'm just not getting fed. You know what I want to do besides weep? I want to say, why aren't you getting fed? But Jesus had the table spread where the saints of God were fed. I preached the same book that D.L. Moody did. A hungry heart would come and say, feed me, Lord. Because love will cause you to hear when others don't. You say, I don't get anything out of the Bible. Fall in love with Jesus and you will. It's not reading three chapters a day and reading through the Bible in a year. That's the rule. That's the law. No, no. You just fall in love with Jesus. You know, I... I need his word more than my necessary food. Lord, I'm so hungry. There's a reason why Jesus said, the greatest of these is charity. Bless God for those who try to do right, but try to do right from a heart full of love. Love will cause you to hear when others don't. Then John chapter 19, let's look at verse uh, before we close tonight, let's look at verse 26 and 27. John chapter 19, verse 26 and 27. 
And verse 26, the Bible says, When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, who's that? John. He saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. You know, when I was a young Christian for many years, I used to think that woman, behold thy son, meaning Jesus hanging on the cross. Of course, her son was uh, right there. But uh, the context, who's standing next to her again? John. He said unto her, woman, uh, behold thy son, meaning John. And he looked at John and he said, behold thy mother, in verse 27. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. No arguments, no excuses, no list of reasons why he couldn't feed another mouth. No, the Bible says he took her home as his mother. Guess what? Love will make you care for other people. Let me just say this in closing tonight. You know, there are folks all around you, and not just in this building, without Jesus Christ. They sit in their homes like David in a cave. This is the saddest verse in the scriptures. Crying out, no man, no man careth for my soul. What a sorry state of affair when a Bible-believing fundamental Christian lives next door to a lost person and never one time invite them to Jesus Christ. If you really love Jesus Christ, you would care. What kind of a Christian are you tonight? I hope, I hope you're one who loves Jesus. God, break our hearts now abideth faith, hope, charity. Now abideth Peter, James, and John. These three, but the greatest of these is John. There's a reason why Jesus said he's the greatest, because love shows the most action. The problem tonight is, folks, isn't that you don't love Jesus, but maybe you don't love him enough. Loving God and living and loving others would definitely please God. What love will cause. Let's please stand. Every head bowed, please, and every eyes closed and no one looking around, please. You know, maybe you're here tonight and, and I don't know your situation. I don't know what your needs are. But I promise you God does. And he cares for you. Do you love Jesus Christ? Do you listen when others don't? Do you care for other people? Do you, are you where you ought to be? Where you're supposed to be? When these doors are open and the activities are going on in, in God's house and God's work? You know, a person sits in a pew and, uh, and never gets involved, you'll never care for, for your church. You'll never care for your pastor. And, you know, it's only when we get in, involved, you know, uh, there come a time when, when, when you maybe get upset and disapprove of things. But I promise you, if you fall in love with Jesus Christ, you'll serve him forever. You'll serve him forever. So tonight, let's be honest with ourselves. Let us see ourselves as Jesus sees us. Where are you tonight? I don't know. I only know my own heart. But don't look at the person next to you tonight or behind you or in front of you. Look in and see yourself as Jesus sees you. And the great thing in that old hymn, you know, take your burdens to the cross and leave them there. Lord Jesus, we sure do love you. And God, please forgive us for sin, for failing you, for not being all that we could be for you. God, please meet with us tonight. Have your way in this invitation. Lord, if there's anybody, anybody in our midst tonight who doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, 
Lord, I pray that they'll come forward at the invitation and let the pastor or one of us take the word of God and show them from the scriptures how they too can have eternal life. We love you, Lord, and thank you for loving us. In Jesus' we precious name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Before we sing the invitation song, I want to thank Brother Randy tonight. And uh, I do believe that 1 Corinthians 13, 13, I had special little ribbons made. And I, I believe I passed them out the very first Sunday uh, installed as pastor with that scripture. And believing and knowing that, and I just, want to, I just want to corroborate what he said tonight by saying this. Looking back, it's going on four years. Looking back to that Sunday and handing those little Bible markers out with that passage of scripture, knowing that it would be the love, the charity kind of love, the love that we give would be what would knit the hearts of the saints of God together in this house that came looking for truth, Amen. that came looking for a family, that came looking for spiritual respite because they were injured sheep, that came for healing. But I knew that it would be the kind of love that has to be not just possessed, but given. Amen. I thank you for the timely message tonight. Brother Adolph's going to lead us in an invitation song. If you need to come to this altar and pray for your family, you need to give some of that love to them via prayers at this altar, you come tonight. If you want to rededicate your life, you come tonight, whatever the need may be.